Greetings. This is Life in the 1800s Newspapers, and we're going to read an old 1888 newspaper together today. In these newspapers, you're actually hearing from your ancestors in their own words what was happening on that specific day. And today is May 12th, 1888. And we're reading the Walpole Star newspaper that was made in Foxborough, Massachusetts. And the cost was a bargain price at four cents. So let's see what stories made the newspapers on that tranquil day on May 12th, 1888 in the United States. Utilizing a watchdog. An inhabitant of China, Maine, has been utilizing his valuable Newfoundland watchdog by carding and spinning his fleece. It made four skeins of jet black yarn, weighing two pounds and a quarter, and spun as easily and as well as sheep's wool. A farmer near Chabance, Illinois, having an ox that did not obey orders, concluded that the animal was deaf and bought an ear trumpet, which worked with great success. The animal had lost its appetite, but with its return of hearing, ate heartily. The ear trumpet is fastened in place by wires around one of the horns. The story is from a Western paper, and no chromo goes with it. He thought it was shortcake. Border. Strawberry shortcake, Mrs. Stew? Mrs. Stew. No, Mr. Fickle. It is a plain strawberry cake. Border. Oh, I thought it was strawberry shortcake, as I find my piece rather short of berries. What is it? Is asked more than once during the day by people passing the residence of Lewis Pond, Baker Street. A what is it? is an appropriate a name as can be used by the many who have examined it. For further information, we ask our readers to inspect the animal as it stands in front of Mr. Pond's house, a natural curiosity and one well worth seeing. Private Grounds. Mr. Editor, for about five years, I have kept posted at either end of the land I bought of Mr. Hewins, west of my residence and orchard, a large sign warning trespassers that the premises were private grounds and that trespassing was not permitted. The notices, year after year, have been disregarded by many and by Sharon people as well as by boarders in the village. My family can seldom walk or sit in the grove without being disturbed by men, with or without dogs, and also by women traveling through there. Frequently they come through the entire premises, grassland, grove, orchard, lawn, and all to Pond Street. The people seem to think that because owners of corner lots permit the public to cross the same at pleasure, that a man has no right to have a grove fenced in and arrange seats for the use of family and friends, and so pull down fences and walk in to suit their own convenience. If hereafter persons continue the practice, they must take the risk of the consequences and one form of risk will be that of receiving a stray bullet during target practice, which is occasionally indulged in on the grounds. Signed, George Kempton. An observant citizen's calculation. An observant citizen makes the following calculation, which is given for what it is worth. 
out of every 10 average American men, one will take the wrong side of the walk, two will stand in the door of a car if there is no seat, three will sport a toothpick in their mouths in public, four will expectorate in public places, five will carry an umbrella horizontally under their arm in the street, six will cross their legs in a car, Seven will fail to remove their hats in a downtown elevator when a lady enters. Eight will forget to shut a car door when they go in or out. Nine will risk their lives to catch a train when they could just as well wait for the next one. And the whole ten will growl all their lives at public nuisances without doing a thing to abate them. The Susan Payson Place was sold at auction last Saturday to C.W. Hodges for $2,000. Mr. Hodges will make several improvements on the property. The house was erected in the spring of 1857, and he with his family were the first persons to occupy it. Now, after 31 years, he becomes its owner. A fine Victor tricycle for sale in first class condition will be so low for cash. Easy running and an easy rider. Inquire of Box 299, Foxborough, Massachusetts. A large boulder weighing nearly 10 tons passed through here Monday for Franklin where it was to be shipped to Hartford, Connecticut. It was 17 feet long and three feet wide and was intended for the bed of an engine. Four pairs of horses and two yokes of oxen were necessary to convey it to its destination. The rock was quarried at the High Rock Granite Quarry and was the largest ever taken out. Why she thought so. Who was the wisest man? asked the Sunday school teacher. Solomon, promptly replied a little girl. And who was the holiest? Moses. Moses? What makes you think so? Because I often hear Papa speaking of holy Moses. Thanks so much for watching. I think I'll end today's video with a few short early movies.
Thank you.